Hi there, everyone, and welcome to The Daily Gardener, and thank you for listening. I'm your host, Jennifer Ebling. It's December 4th. Today, we celebrate the botanist who discovered the rhododendron minus growing in South Carolina. We'll also learn about the young German botanist who died on the Niger expedition after valiantly trying to keep his plants alive. We'll recognize an Irish doctor who was one of the first people to discover the greenhouse effect. And we'll salute the naturalist of Germantown, Pennsylvania, whose love for wildflowers and nature was unsurpassed. Today, we grow that garden library with a down-home book dedicated to helping you with the family garden to make it a resounding success. And then we'll wrap things up with the brilliant plantswoman who understood the subtleties of gardening and design. Now, before we get started, I have just a few reminders for you. First of all, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast wherever you're listening to the podcast, whether it's Apple, Google, or an app like Spotify or Stitcher. All you have to do is hit the subscribe button, and that's a big help to the show. And don't forget that while you're at home, you can ask your smart speaker to play the show for you. Just ask Alexa or Google to play the latest episode of the Daily Gardener podcast, and she will. It's just that easy. And if you get a chance, head on over to the Daily Gardener website. You'll find it online at thedailygardener.org. And once you get there, you can look around and see all of the articles that I've written for the show, whether it's an article about botanical history or a poem or even all of the book recommendations for the show. It's all there, it's all free, and it's waiting for you. And when you're on the website, you'll see right there on the homepage that there's a spot where you can sign up for the free Friday newsletter for the show. Every Friday, you'll get an email from me, which contains a personal update, garden-related items, and reminders for your calendar. You'll get a nice list of all of the book recommendations for that week for the Grow That Garden Library segment. Plus, I throw in extras like garden gift ideas, garden-inspired recipes, and exclusive updates regarding the show. Plus, Every single week, one lucky subscriber gets a book from the Grow That Garden Library bookshelf. So there's a little incentive for you. Now, for today's curated news, I've included an article that was written by David Dominey, and this is his fencing guide. You know, for gardeners, fences accomplish a lot. They not only define the boundary lines of our gardens, but they can provide shade and privacy. They're very, very practical. And David does a nice job in this piece of talking about why you should choose a fence and then the types of fencing that you should consider. And if you'd like to check out David's post, along with any of my other curated news articles or original blog posts, all you have to do is head on over to the listener community in the free Facebook group for the show, The Daily Gardener Community. And that makes it super easy for you because once you're there, you can just head on up to the search bar and type in what you're looking for and these articles will pop right up. Or you can just scroll through the discussion and peruse to your heart's content. So the next time you're on Facebook, just search for Daily Gardener Community where you'd search for a friend and request to join. I'd love to meet you in the group. Here's today's brevities. It was on this day, December 4th in 1788, that Andre Michaud made his way from Georgia into South Carolina by crossing the Tugelow River. In his journal, Michaud wrote, At dawn, I went to look at the banks of the river, and I recognized the yellow root, a new species of rhododendron, mountain laurel, hydrangea, and hemlock spruce. Now, Harvard's Charles Sprague Sargent remarked on the significance of this moment because it was the first time that Michaud laid eyes on the rhododendron minus. 
Rhododendron grows naturally in the South, from North Carolina all the way down to Alabama. With its soil and climate, South Carolina is perfect for rhododendrons. The blossoms of rhododendrons have a wide color range from white to deep purple and blue. A versatile plant, rhododendrons can be planted as specimens or even hedges in gardens or natural settings. If you have an oak or pine trees on your property, rhododendrons are ideal for underplanting due to the filtered light from the tree canopy, the soil pH, and the natural mulch. As the mulch breaks down, the organic matter provides the rhododendron with the perfect mix of nutrients. Finally, rhododendrons need well-drained soil, and consider taking advantage of that fact by planting them on a slope. And it was on this day, December 4th, in 1841, that the German botanist Theodor Vogel was laid low with dysentery. After joining the Niger expedition, Theodore recorded in his journal the difficulties of traveling without the benefit of a Wardian case on board a naval warship called the Wilberforce. He wrote, As soon as I got on board, my first care was to the plants gathered since we arrived at Cape Coast Castle. But though I had taken all possible care, much was spoiled and almost everything in a bad state. It has been my lot after endless labor. I mention this on purpose that in case my collection comes into other hands, I may not be accused of negligence. I have sacrificed every convenience to gain room and spared no trouble to overcome the dampness of the ship and of the atmosphere, but without success. The general arrangements of a man of war do not give many opportunities for such experiments. When will the time arrive that naturalists will receive the appropriate and necessary support. Well, when Theodore became sick on this day in 1841, his friend and fellow German, the mineralogist Charles Gottfried Roscher, tended to him for 13 days, and he never left his bedside. On December 17th, about midday, Theodor woke to ask Charles if everything was ready for their excursion, and then he peacefully passed away. And today is the anniversary of the death of the Irish experimental physicist John Tyndall, who died on this day, December 4th, in 1893. In 1859, John discovered the link between atmospheric CO2 and what we call the greenhouse effect. And although John was often attributed as the first person to discover the greenhouse effect, today we know that a female scientist named Eunice Foote discovered it in 1856, three years earlier. That said, John is best known for learning why the sky is blue. It turns out that light scattering through molecules suspended in the atmosphere creates the color, which is sometimes referred to as Tyndall blue. As all gardeners know, there's nothing more beautiful than the garden set against the backdrop of a brilliant blue sky. All in all, John was one of Ireland's most successful scientists and educators. And it was on this day, December 4th, in 1903, that the Germantown historian, botanist, and writer Edwin Jellett wrote his final column for the Independent Gazette. Edwin's charming column in the Independent Gazette appeared for 40 weeks, and it's where he shared his thoughts on his two passions, 
history, and botany in Northwest Philadelphia. Gardeners will appreciate that every one of Edwin's columns wrapped up with a list of the 30 to 40 plants shared in his post, along with both the Latin and common names. And if you'd like to read Edwin's work, you can, thanks to the Aubrey Arboretum. In honor of its centennial in 2016, the Aubrey Arboretum digitized all of Edwin's columns. Here's an excerpt from that last column that was published today in 1903. To me, the veil is stored with memories, and one of its most pleasing and tender is Thomas Meehan's connection with it. In this region dwell many of our fairest and rarest wildflowers. Usually about the middle of January, there's a new color in sweet birch, sassafras, red maple, and many small plants. And the blushing glow is evidence of a renewed circulation. Hazelnut, if not in bloom at Christmas, is always so shortly after and is closely followed by alder, pussy willow, and silver maple. In favorable seasons, these always bloom before February 1st. In gardens, ice plant, sedums, and euphorbia appear early above ground, and evergreen native and exotic, Adam's needle, Scottish heath, Japanese euonymus, retinospora, native and Chinese arborvitae, box and Japanese privet, laurel and rhododendrons, holly and yew, cedar, juniper, and evergreen cypress, fir, spruce, and pine, and other evergreen plants cast shadows upon the snow to remind us of pleasant days past and of warmer, brighter ones to come. In Unearthed Words, here's an excerpt from The Travelers by the English poet and novelist Arthur St. John Adcock. The way that leads to winter will lead to summer too, for all roads end in other roads where we may start anew. It's time to grow that garden library with today's book. The Family Garden Plan by Melissa K. Norris. This book came out in January of 2020, and the subtitle is Grow a Year's Worth of Sustainable and Healthy Food. In this book, Melissa shares her expertise after growing up gardening and now gardening with her own family on almost 15 acres of land in the foothills of the North Cascade Mountain Range in Washington State. Melissa shares hard-won knowledge from decades of trial and error. She's an expert heirloom gardener, preserver, farmer, cook, and homemaker. Her book is personal and inspirational. Melissa shares Bible verses, family stories, and photography from her very own home and garden, which gives her book a charming authenticity that many garden books lack. Melissa's book is meant to be used as a reference. She includes helpful tips and suggestions to keep you and your garden growing. This book is 224 pages of down-home advice from a genuine gardener with a passion for helping others. You can get a copy of The Family Garden Plan by Melissa K. Norris and support the show using the Amazon link in today's show notes for around $19. Finally, here's something sweet to revive the little botanic spark in your heart. Today is the birthday of the charismatic Australian gardener, designer, and writer, Edna Walling, who was born on this day, December 4th in 1896. Remembered for her gorgeous garden designs, 
Edna wrote some wonderful books on Australian gardening and landscaping. After working nonstop for four decades between the 1920s and the 1960s, Edna created over 300 gardens. Today, many Australians regard Edna as the most excellent landscape designer that Australia has ever known. An ardent conservationist, Edna was ahead of her time. An advocate for native plants, Edna's favorite plants were naturally drought-hardy, a must for Australia's harsh climate. And Peter Watts wrote about Edna's work and legacy. And he said, Edna was a gardener's designer, a brilliant plants woman who understood the subtleties of gardening and design. And she always thought gardens should be just a bit bigger than they needed so that you couldn't control them entirely. It was Edna Walling who said, Nature is our greatest teacher. And there's an adorable story about Edna that I thought you would enjoy. In November of 1941, Edna received criticism from a friend for sharing her preference for perennials over annuals. She wrote, I got a letter from a friend the other day who addressed me, Dear Anti-Annual, If you can't grow them yourself, you needn't be snippy about them. Ooh, what have I said? Something rude about Iceland poppies or asters? How narrow-minded of me. Thanks for listening to The Daily Gardener. And remember, for a happy, healthy life, garden every day. The Daily Gardener is produced in lovely Wyoming, Minnesota, with the help of Paige Mance, Brooke Beerbaum, Kiana Rayleigh, Maddie Doyle, Natalie Decker, and Eric Begay. You can find The Daily Gardener on all your favorite social media. You can follow the show on Instagram, and listeners always have a standing invitation to join the free Facebook group for the show. Just search for Daily Gardener Community the next time you're on Facebook and request to join. All the stories and books that are featured on the show can be found over at thedailygardener.org, thedailygardener.org. And while you're there, be sure to sign up for my free Friday newsletter. Last but not least, you can share your own gardener greetings on the show by emailing me at jennifer at thedailygardener.org. I'm your host, Jennifer Ebling, and as always, have a great day in the garden, and we'll see you tomorrow.